Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and it's been nine months since I made my first unboxing and review video on this guy, the 77 inch LG G1. And since then, I've played hundreds of hours of games, probably watched thousands more TV shows and movies. You can even see on my remote control, if I put it right up to the camera, some of these buttons have started to fade. And I think we're at the point now where I've said to my wife, oh, look at those blacks and that contrast during a dark scene of a movie, that now whenever she plays her OG Nintendo Switch or we go to a movie theater, she says, it's good, but it's not OLED. A big thank you to LG for sending this review sample over and also offering to sponsor this video. But as you guys know, with all my content, all opinions are my own. But do you know what the best thing about this TV is right now? It's not the fact that it has the OLED EVO panel and AI Gen 4 processor 4K. It's not even the flush wall mount, even though I've kind of ruined that by adding a Philips Hue gradient strip behind it. The best bit about this TV is that it is now about 20%, maybe 20, 25% cheaper than it was when it came out back in April. It was a whopping 4,800 quid. Now you can find it for a little under four grand. The 65 inch was 3000, now it's 2200. And so the thing is, we've seen all the shiny new TVs unveiled at CES 2022, including the successor to this TV with the new G2 series, with new processors and potentially even higher brightness, but these won't come out until probably April. And as with any new piece of tech, you'll be paying top dollar at first. So sometimes last year's model may end up being a better buy. So it's cheaper now. We've also had a whole bunch of software updates. For example, the game optimizer menu has had a full design overhaul since I made my first videos. They've also added a few new streaming apps, including GeForce Now for game streaming, which was added in late November. I have to say though, I do have one criticism about this TV. In fact, any current LG TV, and that is WebOS 6, this home screen menu, which as you can see, takes a few seconds to populate. It is a good idea. Show all the recent and popular shows across different apps up front, so you don't have to then go into each one to browse. It's just a bit too slow. I would love an option whereby we just get a smaller, lower third menu like older WebOS versions. It would be faster. It would let you keep watching what's on in the background while you navigate. If LG's watching, then for me, I would love a full screen option and a minimized option for this home screen. What do you guys think? Also, while this isn't something that's affected my G1, quite a few people have been reporting issues of the C1 and the G1s made in September and October not supporting HDCP 2.3 correctly. Now my friend Vincent to HDTV Test made a great video about this, and LG has rolled out updates over the last few weeks to fix it. It is a software fix, so it is good to see that we're getting continued support from LG. But while there's always room for improvement, and I have just noticed that Sylvie the Cat is <laughs> looking at the birds on the TV. I don't think there's a better TV on the market. Yes, you can pay a lot more money for something like the uh, 8K Z1 series from LG, but realistically, it's maybe the C1 and the G1 that you're gonna be considering. And actually, I recently renovated my studio, which was my garage. And in there, while I have been using a review sample of the Sky Glass TV, I've definitely been spoiled by OLED and I wanted to buy one for the new studio. So I was looking at the Sony A90J, the Samsung QN95A, both absolutely fantastic TVs. And on the Samsung, even though you have brightness advantages with that QLED panel, there's no Dolby Vision support. I know it has HDR10+, but for me, there's just so much Dolby Vision content that it's a bit of a deal breaker. So after a lot of back and forth, I actually ended up going with the LG C1. It shares almost all the same features as the G1, but it's a fair bit cheaper. I felt the C1 was the right fit for the studio. However, if you're happy to pay a bit more, the G1's OLED EVO technology does noticeably boost the brightness, which is one of the areas OLEDs can fall behind their QLED competition. Essentially, it's the processor combined with the EVO panel, which actually uses different materials that lets it run more efficiently, so then it can hit higher brightness levels without ramping up power consumption or increasing the risk of burn-in. And in my tests, it's between 10 and 20% brighter across the board, not just peak brightness. The other big advantage of the G1, the gallery design, is of course that flush, no gap wall mount. And it does exactly what it says on the tin. It also might mean that you can get away with a bigger size because if this was on my TV stand, like a foot or two closer, then yes, I know it would be bigger for me. So maybe then you don't need the bigger size, but because my living room, our houses here in the UK aren't that big, being able to wall mount this TV, and even though I've got the gradient strip, have it right up against the wall, just means I can get away with a bigger size TV without the missus telling me off. I'm just kidding, she loves this TV. If anything, she wants a bigger one. The G1 also comes with built-in far-field microphones for hands-free voice control, 
I haven't really found myself using it that much, if I'm honest, outside of maybe adjusting the volume or turning the TV off when I can't find the remote. I think if I could pinch one feature from Arrival, it would be Samsung's One Connect box, because even though we do have the four HDMI 2.1 ports here, which is great, rooting them around the back and then somehow hiding them as they come down, unless you're willing to drill more holes in your wall and root them through the back that way, I really do like Samsung's solution of having all the inputs on a separate box, so you then just have one clear cable going to the TV. Although if you do have any other better options for hiding a bunch of cables here, other than my painted piece of plasticky wood thing, let me know in the comments. Speaking of ports, as I say, we've got four HDMIs and they're all the latest 2.1 spec, and this helps make it more future-proof, and it's exactly what you want for hooking up your PS5 or your Series X. And one of these is also an eARC HDMI, which I've connected to my Sonos Arc. LG do offer their own range of soundbars, and actually there's some pretty tempting deals to go with it, but I would recommend some kind of external soundbar or speaker system. The inbuilt speakers are okay, but for a TV that looks this good, you want it to sound pretty good as well. One question I do get asked a lot actually is what picture mode do I use? And 95% of the time I use the ISF Expert Bright Mode, occasionally switch it to the dark if I'm watching it at night and it's getting a bit too bright, and that's about it. Everything else is handled automatically. When you're playing games, the Auto Low Latency Mode, try saying that three times after a few drinks, the ALM will switch you to Game Optimizer, which obviously has the fastest response times, lowest input lag, turns off all the back processing, and that's what you want. And also if you're playing HDR content, it'll switch to an HDR or Dolby Vision preset as well. So you don't have to worry about anything. And also the filmmaker mode, which a lot of people do love and is supposed to show the movie as the director intended. Personally, I find it just a bit too dark and also a bit sort of sepia tone. So I don't tend to use it. Let's go back to games because in a separate video, I did call this and I still maintain it's the best gaming TV you can buy. It checks every box. OLED, HDMI 2.1, 120fps, G-Sync, VRR, ALM, low response times and input lag. They've also updated this handy game optimizer menu, which shows you what your FPS is, uh, and also if it's using G-Sync or FreeSync. You can even switch between game picture modes like FPS, which raises the shadows to help you see enemies. It's worth mentioning that, of course, the LG C1 has all those gaming features as well, and it's a lot more affordable, but the advantage of the G1 is it's a bit brighter, which means games can look a bit more vibrant. Okay, just a couple of quick tips, and in general, system, and then additional settings, you can turn off home promotion that actually hides sponsored advertisements, I did that straight away. You do also have the option to use the TV as a kind of IoT hub for your smart home tech, although I don't have a smart fridge or washing machine, just a bunch of Philips Hue lights, and to be honest, I do find the interface a bit slow sometimes, so it's not something I've really felt the need to use. But this thing is jam-packed with features. Chromecast, AirPlay 2, Alexa, and the Google Assistant. You don't have to use any of these, but they're nice to have. So far, so good, but what about burn-in? There's an entire menu dedicated to OLED care, with pixel cleaning, screen move, adjusting the brightness of static loops, screen off timers, even energy saving modes, all reduce the risk. Now, I can only speak from my experience, but I've not had any problem with burn-in ever, and that's even having used a 48-inch C1 OLED as a desktop monitor. So realistically, as long as you don't abuse it, turn off all those safety features and just have a static image on there 24 hours a day running, you're not gonna have any issues. So it almost feels like we've reached peak TV. The only ways this could maybe be improved is maybe if it was even brighter, perhaps over a thousand nits, if the menus were a little bit faster and more responsive, and perhaps if 8K prices continue to fall, so then it becomes a bit more realistic uh, to get an 8K OLED TV outside of the crazy expensive Z1 series. You do, of course, have 8K nano cells, which are great, but I still prefer OLED, so maybe that's something we could see in the future as well. Still, while I would say the C1 offers the best value, I think the G1 is a great option for the best image quality, brightness, and design for an OLED TV, and it is significantly cheaper than when it first launched, so now is a great time to buy one. If you enjoyed the video, a like and subscribe would be lovely, and if you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.